Africa 2025. Let us look into the future of Africa into the year 2025, four years from now, and see how the African continent will look like in terms of urbanization, population, GDP, and other key factors, critically and analytically, and also to make our critical observations and our recommendations, shall we? The population of Africa by the year 2025. The population of Africa as of the 7th of January 2021 stood at about 1.357 billion people, as against the global population of about 7.838 billion, according to United Nations through Wodometer.info. The population of Africa is growing at the fastest rate in the world, growing at about 2.5%, as against 0.06%. In Europe, 0.62% in North America, and 0.86% in Asia. This shows that the population of Africa is growing at about 40 times as fast as that of Europe, four times as fast as that of North America, or three times as fast as Asia. And also, the population of the world is growing by 1.1%, and that shows that Africa's population is growing at least twice as fast as that of world population. Youth population in Africa. The population of youths in Africa is very enormous. At least three quarter or 75% of Africa's population is below the age of 35. And by the year 2025, Africa is going to have at least a billion or more youths. So by the year 2025, Africa will have a lot of population to take care of. Urbanization in Africa 2025. Urbanization is the transformation of rural areas into urban areas or the movement of people from rural areas into urban areas. Urbanization in Africa is getting on as the fastest in the world and as of the year 2021, January 2021, about 587 million Africans were living in urban areas which is about 3.8% of Africa's population and by the year 2025 I project that at least 700 million Africans will be living in urban areas which is going to be about 46 0.7% of Africa's population by the year 2025, which shows that Africa will still have more people living in the rural areas and urban areas by the year 2025. Currently, African leaders are building cities. As of the year 2019, over $100 billion were committed into building new cities across Africa because African leaders have found out that it is easier or cheaper to build new cities than to refurbish old ones. And that's why we have cities going on across Africa like in Kenya, we have the Techno City and we have the Tattoo City. In Nigeria, there is the Centenary City and there is the uh, Eco Atlantic City. In Senegal, Econ is building the Econ City. And by the year 2025, according to the World Economic Forum, Africa will have at least 100 cities with a population above 1 million. And that will be twice as much as that of Southern America. Internet penetration in Africa 2025. Internet penetration talks about the percentage of the population that uses internet. As of December 2019, about 526 million Africans were using internet. And as of December 2020, about 603 million Africans were using internet, which shows that about 107 million internet users were added into the African internet users at the year 2020. And if this trend continues, that means by the year 2025, Africa will have at least 1 billion internet users. And that will be over 65% of Africa's population at the year 2025. And this will be giving Africans a lot of opportunity in the internet uh, space or internet business. Currently, we have um, M-Pesa, we have Flutterwave, uh, Spacetac in Africa. And with the amount of users of internet by the year 2025, Africa will have a lot of opportunities for internet businesses in Africa, social media influencers and so on. And Africa probably will have her own uh, Facebook or Twitter or something more original. And I heard about something like Dimples, social media that some Africans are working on to put up so that Africans can also key in and start using it. The African continental free trade area and its effect on the African economy by the year 2025. The African continental free trade area finally kickstarted on the 1st of January 2021 
as against the first of July 2020 when it was supposed to kick start. And according to a lot of experts, for example, the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, this is going to increase um, intra African trade by some 52% by the year 2023. Initially, they made the projection and the projection that it was going to increase intra African trade by the year, by 50% by the year 2022. But because of the delay from the year 2020 to the year 2021 for kickstarting the African continental free trade area, that means it's going to happen by the year 2023 instead of 2022. And currently, we know that intra African trade is the least among the well, blocks in the world at about 16 percent whereas that of asia is over 50 percent and that of europe is over 60 percent so the african continental free trade area is going to allow for goods and services to move more and be seen moved across africa by the year 2025 more than we currently see it and intra african trade is also supposed to double africa's manufacturing sector from about 500 billion dollars to about a trillion dollars by the year 2025 because much of the volume of trade between African states have to do with manufactured products, whereas trade between Africa and the rest of the world uh, is based on exporting primary products, for example, exporting raw fish. So the African continent free trade area is going to boost the manufacturing sector of Africa. And also, according to the Brookings Institution, the African continent free trade area is going to boost the competitiveness of African economy. And according to the World Economic Forum, competitiveness is the set of policies and institutions that make an economy to be more productive. According to them, competitiveness is synonymous with productivity. But we know that productivity is not only the factor that guarantees competitiveness. Competitiveness has to do with three key factors, productivity, marketability, and profitability. And currently, only 10 African states are competitive, including Mauritius, Seychelles, Kenya, and so on. But this African continental free trade is going to increase the competitiveness of the African economy by increasing the large market, the markets that African economies can sell to. That will increase the marketability of African products. And that will also increase the profitability and encourage Africans to produce more. Therefore, the African economy is going to be more competitive by the year 2025. Peace and conflict in Africa by the year 2025. According to the African Union, by the year 2025, the guns in Africa will all be silenced. But currently, the guns in Africa will not yet be silenced. And many African countries are still in conflict, whether at the latent level or at the open level. And we know that if the trend continues by the year 2025, the conflict in Africa will likely continue because we still do not yet have a very serious mechanism in Africa to prevent conflict. The African Union is always interested in conflict resolution or conflict suppression and they have forgotten that the best way is conflict prevention because it is said that prevention is better than cure and the stitch in time saves life. The African Union does not yet have a system an early warning system or an established effective mechanism to prevent conflict in africa to resolve the issues we have in africa that could prevent that could cause more conflict therefore by the year 2025 the conflicts in africa will likely continue because we have not yet seen anything serious that the african union is putting in place to prevent conflicts electricity in africa by the year 2025 Currently, over 600 million Africans are without electricity. And we know that that is very bad because without electricity, Africa cannot become an industrialized continent. And because of that, we know that Ethiopia recently opened up her Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam as of last year. And the dam has a capacity of over 4,000 megawatts. And it's supposed to power entire Ethiopia and also exports power to neighboring African states. That will reduce the amount of people without electricity in Africa at least by at least from 40 million or 30 million. Also, in order to solve the issue of power supply in Africa, many Africans are going to look beyond waiting for the government to provide energy. We're looking at alternative power supply systems, for example, solar, wind energy, biogas and so on. And 
we believe that many Africans are going to key in to all those other systems and have lights without depending on the federal government's greed, power greed, to have power supply. Nigeria announced towards the end of year 2020 that they were going to, Nigeria was going to pump in about 369 million dollars in order to provide solar panels, solar power energy to over 25 million Nigerians. That is laudable if Nigerian government can carry that out. And once that is done, it's going to reduce the amount of people in Africa without electricity by at least 30 million. And we expect that other African states should also key in to such, so that by the year 2025, we'll have less than 100 million Africans without electricity. Migration in Africa by the year 2025. According to the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, between the years 2013 and 2015, over 500,000 Africans traveled outside Africa in search of greener pastures. And we know that by the year 2025, the trend is likely going to continue. Except we see a radical transformation in the African economy in order to change the direction of Africa's use from outside Africa to maybe within Africa or to build a future within Africa so that we don't need to travel outside in order to become rich and that is going to be dependent on the economy of Africa. So by the year 2025, we don't foresee any likely change in migration in Africa. The GDP of Africa by the year 2025. The gross domestic product of Africa for the year 2018, according to the International Monetary Fund (IMF), stood at about 2.6 trillion US dollars. The GDP of Africa grew by about 3% from the year 2018 to the year 2019, which shows that the GDP of Africa by the year 2019 will be about 2.7 trillion US dollars, about 2.8, and. Because of the COVID-19, the economy of the world shrank and the economy of Africa shrank by at least 4% by the year 2020. That means this year, the GDP of Africa since so January 2021 should also stand at about $2.6 trillion. The GDP of Africa is supposed to grow by some 3% from this year 2021 and keep growing. So we expect that by year 2025, the GDP of Africa is going to stand at about 2.9 to about 3 trillion US dollars. Poverty in Africa by the year 2025. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic, the economy of Africa fell, as I said earlier, and the GDP of Africa reduced. But you know, the population of Africa did not reduce because of COVID-19. And therefore, the percentage of Africans living in extreme poverty increased. As of the year 2019, about 423 million Africans were living in extreme poverty. But towards the end of the year 2020, over 526 million Africans were said to be living in extreme poverty because of the COVID-19. Therefore, by the year 2025, we expect that about or less than 400 million Africans should be living in extreme poverty since the GDP of Africa will be growing at least by 3% by this year and to about 2.9 trillion dollars a year 2025. Employment in Africa 2025. According to the African Development Bank, IFDB, every single day, about 33,000 Africans join the labor market. According to the African Development Bank, at least 12 million jobs must be created in order to mop up all the Africans who are going to jobless. And the African Development Bank is working on creating at least 25 million jobs in order to absorb African youth. And according to them, over 60% of African youth are currently, currently in search of jobs. And by the year 2025, we expect that by then, the number of African youth who are unemployed should fall drastically, at least because of the opportunities presented by the African continental free trade area and because of the activities of the African Development Bank and other activities that might take place. But if not, the amount of Africans who are jobless will increase in terms of percentage from over 60% to probably over 70%. Electric cars in Africa by 2025. The world is shifting from the use of fuel powered cars to the use of electric cars. And we can see that Tesla, which is one of the leading car uh, factories that produces electric cars, is among the richest companies in the world 
and the owner of Tesla is now the richest man in the world together with Jeff Bezos, the owner of Amazon. This shows that electric cars are in very high demand across the world. And by the year 2035, California and the European Union plan to phase out fuel powered cars. And also by the year 2030, UK plan to phase out fuel powered cars. But in Africa, I've not seen any concrete plan for us to exit the use of fuel powered cars. And cobalt, which is the primary material for producing electric cars for the electric back, uh, car batteries. A cobalt is found in Africa. Over 60% of world's cobalt reserve is found in Congo in Africa. Therefore, Africa is supposed to use more electric cars than any other region in the world. That means Africa should produce at least 60% of the world's electric cars, but that is not happening. Currently, Tesla has car factories in California, in Shanghai, in Germany, in the UK, and so on. But even though Elon Musk was born in South Africa, still does not have any Tesla car factory in Africa. And we have not yet built any gigantic car factory that can produce electric cars in Africa. So by the year 2025, if Africa does not cash in to the production of electric cars, we are still going to fall behind. Literacy rates in Africa by the year 2025. Literacy talks about the ability to read and write, and literacy rate talks about the population that can read and write as against the general population. And as of the year 2019-2020, Africa had about 70% of the population who could read and write as against the global average of 90%. By the year 2025, we expect that at least 80% of Africans will be able to read and write because as of the year 2017 Africa or inner Africa had about 65% literacy rates and from 65% to about 70% in just two years it shows that by the year 2025 at least 80% of us in inner Africa will be able to read and to write.